welcome guys to the Slowpoke World, well, and today we're finally covering that Mad Party deck, you know. On paper, non-GX, one attachment, reaching for OKOs, almost unlimited damage cap. But just how good do we think it's really going to be? Let me give you one of the better starting lists I've seen, okay? Let's have a look. Then, yeah, so let's get started then. Um, Mad Party. Really reminiscent to Night March, if any of you was playing then, all the way back in Phantom Forces. A uh, very similar concept where you'd throw these non-GX attackers in the bin that would attack for really cheap costs, and the more you put in the bin, the more damage you do. So, let's have a look at our main attacker. It's going to be quite funny to show you, but uh, we've actually got Bunnelby as our main attacker. Let's get him there in the corner. So, Bunnelby is a 40 HP basic Pokemon. With one attack, Mad Party. Uh, for a twin energy cost, you do 20 damage for each Pokemon in your discard pile that has the Mad Party attack. So if you've got one, you do 20. If you've got 10, you do 200. Now, back in the day, Night March was one of the best decks in the format because um, 200 was the sort of magic number for most uh, for most uh, for most circumstances. You know, that was hitting 200. Uh, now, with HP getting, like, ridiculously high, I'm not going to lie to you guys. I don't know how competitive this deck will be. Granted, there are more Pokemon you can throw away in this than in Lost March. But, um, I mean, Night March, sorry. But, uh, yeah, B Bunnel B is your main attacker. I know, if, and like I said, if you, if you can get enough in the bin, you can effectively one-shot anything with a 40 HP um, basic Pokemon attack for one attachment. But, um, obviously, the, 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 the big glaring weaknesses is you have 40 HP. So, if you're not, they will kill you. Like, that is, that is going to happen. So, uh, <laughs> let's get on to one Pokemon that we just throw away. We got ourselves Galarian, Mr. Uh, Mr. Rhyme, stage one Pokemon, 120 HP. Um, he has got the Mad Party attack as well, but it's for Water Double Curlus, and that's why we can't, we're not really going to be using him. Uh, Shuffle Dance ability: once during your turn, you may choose one of your opponent's face down prize cards. Switch it with the top card from their deck. So it's a bit like a Mr. Mime for your opponent. But like I said, we're not we're, we're not playing Mr. Mime, so we're never going to use this. The only thing this Mr. Rhyme is in here for is to purposely put in the discard pile to fuel. Our bundle B. We have got one other attacker that we'll get to in a sec. Uh, we got four to Dene again with Mad Party. Now, this one I was teetering about like, could you actually ever use this? Because it's a basic Pokemon, you know, it's got Mad Party, but it's for psychic double colorless. I just don't think you're going to have time to ever get that going, you know, you're not going to have time to pre attach. You know, if there was like a, uh, a counter gain for psychic energy, then maybe you could use this. But uh, as it stands now, we're just foregoing. We're just going to purposely put this little geezer in the bin. Now, here's the one we actually can attack with, and it's really interesting, and it's like it really makes building the Mad Party deck super intriguing. So you've got the Pulte guys here. Stage 1 Pokemon, 60 HP, Stage 1. That's probably the lowest I've seen. Next, like, Pidgeotto, right? This one has an ability, though. Uh, once during your turn, you may discard a Pokemon with Mad Party attack from your hand to draw two cards. So if you get multiple of these out, this could be a nice little engine to uh, funnel these Mad Party, um, you know, Mr. Rhymes or Dedenes into the discard pile. Uh, but uh, and this one can add, and this one can attack as well because it's got the same attack as Bunnelby. Mad Party for a twin energy. And the good thing is about this because this one's technically evolved, you can um, attack with the uh, triple acceleration energy. So you get more energy, right? Because you 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 have got no way of getting back the twin energies. You know, once they're gone, they're gone. But this one can use three CEs, which is kind of cool. So yeah, Party guys acts like a little bit of a like a, a drawer um, whilst being an attacker as well. Pretty cool. And then we play three of the Sinistee, and that's going to look really weird, like, Shay, why are you winning three of the Sinistee, but four of the Poltergeist? Uh, hear me out. So you don't really want to evolve too many Poltergeists at the same time. Poltergeist, sorry. Uh, reason being is because that means they're not in the discard pile. You might even discard pile to free your attack. You might only really want one of these out for the game, you know, and I, I think that's realistic. That's what, that's what I've ever used. Uh, the Sinistee doesn't have Mad Party, which is why any any Pokemon you run in the deck that hasn't got Mad Party is really damaging because it's not as, you know, uh, if it hits this card pile, unless it's like a really good effective card, you don't really want them. If this Sinistee had a uh, Mad Party, then you'd be cooking, you'd be, you'd be, you would play four. So on the assumption that we only really want to evolve one pot of cards, we can throw the rest in the bin. So you don't really want to run too many of the Sinister. You could even go down to two if you wanted. But I'm going to run three just in case you're in a prize two. Something like this. So it's unfortunate that it hasn't got um, the Mad Pipe. I think it would probably be too good if it did. <laughs> 
we've got two Denich to help us draw through. And obviously, we need to get these mad party Pokemon in the discard pile. So, the Denich is going to let us do that whilst drawing cards. And, you know, it is a two prizer, but um, uh, Night March did play loads of champions back in the day. So, um, it's kind of offset. Uh, if they want to, like, um, boss us all the Dene, because you can uptrade so well, it's not the end of the world. Like, if, they're not, if they don't get a bundle it will kill something else late game. So, uh, yeah, you got that. We've then got one Crobat V. This is going to help us draw through a little bit more. You know, if we if we've used Dead Change, we still missed what we needed. You know, you can go you can go in and get yourself Crobat. And then we got ourselves one Mew as well. Um, I, I don't know, like, I'm not sure if you guys have noticed or if, if I've done a good enough job pointing it out, but all these Pokemon have like really low HP. So uh, any sort of bench sniping deck will just clean up. It's unfortunate that Mew doesn't stop her uh, damage counter spell because obviously that would uh, alleviate your Dragapult glaring weakness that you have. But, um, you know, Mew sort of halfway house, that will do. Now, like I said, this, this deck is so unique. I think the best way to play this deck is a Roxy engine. Okay, you don't get to see Roxy too much. And yeah, you could argue that putting some of your damage spread in uh, reasons in here yeah, might not be a bad idea. And I'm, and I'm open for that. But right now, I'm just going to play Roxy with no reasons. Discard two Pokemon from your hand that aren't EX, GX. Uh, draw three for each one you discard in this way. So you can get a uh, discard two Mad Party Pokemon and draw six. Drawing six is nuts, you know, you, you, you get to keep your hand. Anytime you can raw draw cards is, you know, one of the best ways to draw cards. We can just, like, keep your hand and just draw them. So Roxy's going to really help us do that. As good as Roxy is, though, we can only play four. So we're going to supplement that with your professor's research. Get my big hand out of the way. There you go. Uh, as good as Roxy is, it's only drawing your six. Um, and if you haven't got any Pokemon in your hand, it's useless. Whereas research is always live and it always draws you seven. That just goes to the strength of how good research is. Again, we get to use some supporters that we don't get to see all too often. We've got ourselves three Hapu. Um, and this is really cool because with Roxy, you might want to try and grow your hand for a few turns if you can. Um, Hapu, you can play it and it's not going to like discard your hand like a research would, right? Um, does it look at the top six cards of your deck, put two in your hand, discard the rest. So you can get like an effective four mad party uh, Pokemon in the bin. Really strong. It's going to help you dig out your special energies as well, which I like. So, free Hapu. I'm not going to lie. I was toying about with Red's Challenge. Um, I haven't got around to testing that version too much, but that is something I do want to try. So, those uh, for, for, for a while, those Hapu slots were Red's Challenge. But I thought, let's just try and keep the deck as consistent as possible with Hapu's first. And then, you know, if we find that we do miss more stuff, uh, we can go down back to Red's. And then we've got three bosses all just so we can pick up. Um, we can try and uptrade because when we do get to that point where we're one shotting anything, we don't want to be messing around and killing our Stellarish Actually, We do want to be like uptrading into our tomb, potentially three prizes. So bosses orders will let us do that. Alright, let's go into our ball search now then, okay. We've got ourselves three quick ball. Uh, four quick ball, I should say. Uh, quick ball's just really nice, you know. Quick ball's just going to let us... Um, First of all, it lets you discard a card from your hand. So we are going to get rid of a one mad party Pokemon. That's always good. Um, while searching out, you know, Dedenes, Crobats, Mews, all that good stuff. Um, Quick Ball is insane. I wish I could run more, to be honest. <laughs> even, though, even, even though we can't run more than four Quick Ball, we're going to try our best and do uh, four Great Ball as well. Again, all we want to do is just get these mad party Pokemon in our hand and just bin them off. And just grow our hand size so um, i think um great ball is really good for that good use of pokemon communication and it's just going to let us you know swap out any pokemon we have um and trade it into the one we want so if you want um let's say we've got the dene in hand uh, this is the non uh, this is the mad party dene and we really want to get a poltergeist so we can evolve our sinister and get to rolling uh pokemon's gonna let us do that so that's what that's there for we got two U-turn boards. Um, this is because U-turn board gives like a Mew free retreat, Dene free retreat. It gives, I think, the uh, Poltergeist has a one retreat cost as well. So it gives a lot of our deck free retreat, which is always nice. You know, if you need to try and if you need to try and find your energy and you're struggling, you can always send up something that's got a free retreat. You know, do your turn, and then if you miss, you can at least retreat into the thing you want to leave in the active. Or if you do get, you can just retreat into your attacker. So that's pretty cool. In a similar vein, play one switch. You never know when that's going to come up. You know, I think one switch is almost a staple. One ordinary rod. This is so because we are going to be attacking with Bunnelby most of the time. And if we run out of Bunnelbees, you might not be able to attack if you haven't developed Sinistee. So, I'm not Sinistee, Potter Guy, sorry. So, I think um, one ordinary rod is good for that. Let me move that back a little bit. There we go. Yeah, so one ordinary rod is good for that. 
through our stadium. Now, if, we, if you've been watching the channel for a long time, you know that we have some interesting proxies around here. But this one's probably one of the better ones. There's my chaotic swell. No stadiums. There we go. There's not many stadiums that really work for this deck, to be honest. Um, it's a shame that... Um, what's that one? Oh, what's it called? Okay, I can't remember. But there was a stage that wrote... Oh, Sky Pillar. That's it. If Sky Pillar was still around, this would be an auto include in a deck like this. But it's not. So we're going to have to settle with a chaotic swell. Okay, I'll leave that there. And it rounding off the list, then we've got the obvious four twin energy. You know, it works for Bundle B, it works for Pulty Geist. Let's see. There we go, four twin energy. Um, it's our lifeblood. It's a shame there's no like special charge or anything like that in format because we'd really appreciate it in a deck like this. But then again, like I said, because we can attack with Pulty Geist, we can run three triple accelerations as well, okay, and that's going to help us. Um, you know, take the pressure off those twins. I mean, it's possible to win with just the twin energies as well. Um, and if you don't, and if you think this is too much energy, you can always cut the third triple acceleration for something else. But as it turns out, I've played a few games with this, and it's doing me quite well. So I think it's a very good starting point list. Okay. Uh, thank you all for watching. As always, you know, if you have some more Darkness of Blaze content, make sure you check that uh, playlist in the description, where I've been putting out loads of Darkness of Blaze post rotation, uh, you know, decks um, and gameplay as well. Okay. But thank you for watching. As always, and I'll see you all next time.